This is the NFL Play Football Podcast, and I'm Jeff Fisher of High School Football America. NFL Play Football is the NFL's initiative to provide fun and engaging experience for players of all ages and skill levels. Learn more at playfootball.nfl.com. All right, NFL training camps are open, and uh, if you've been following HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com over the last week, we've been putting up several cool stories of how NFL teams around the country are reaching down into the uh, the high school and youth ranks. Uh, one of the teams that uh, has done a great job through the years. I've personally been down there and see what uh, seen what they've done with the uh, the high school programs, the Miami Dolphins with their Junior Dolphins program, and uh, we put up a story earlier this week about uh, wow, this is a great number: fifteen thousand high school school football student athletes have been touched by the Dolphins and the Junior Dolphins uh, over the last five years. That's a huge number, and again, they really do an awesome job with that, and we thought it was good to get Rashana Hamilton on the line here to uh, talk a little bit about the Junior Dolphins and all of the great work they're doing with high school and youth players in the southern part of Florida. Thanks for joining us today, Rashana. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about all the work that's been done and being able to impact some of our youth down here. Yeah, you, uh, like I said, you guys roll up your sleeves and get into it. I've seen it you know, firsthand. So let's let's just start for the people that are not familiar with the Junior Dolphins. A, a, a little bit about the, the mission statement, if you will, because it's not just high school, it's down into the youth ranks. So kind of give us that little mission statement, if you will. Right. So our Junior Dolphins program really strives to teach, learn, and play the game of football in a fun and safe environment. And really what that means is whether you're a five-year-old flag football player or you're a 16-year-old high school tackle football player, we want to make sure that we're impacting you in a positive way. We want to make sure the game is safe for you. We want to make sure that you're having great opportunities and memorable experiences when you are playing. And so that really encompasses everything we do from a community standpoint, but also from our own programming standpoint when we go out and run our own camps and clinics and other events that kids can be involved in. And one of the things that I've noticed through the years is, you know, training camp is obviously a little bit more relaxed right so you guys have done an awesome job with bringing out the teams and let's just speak directly to the high school level there um what what's the idea behind that why is it important to get these uh, coaches and the players and athletic directors to the training facility to see how you guys do it because i know there's a trickle down effect but i'd love to hear you give your kind of take on it sure absolutely i mean our leadership team with 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 Tom Garfinkel and, and Mr. Ross, Mr. Stephen Ross, right? They've always been passionate about making sure that we're impacting high school athletes. And so we developed this program where we would bring high school um, football players and teens out to our actual training camp practices. It's a unique experience in that it's not just the open practice opportunity that every club is doing, but we actually bring them down onto the field. They get to stand on the sidelines and kind of like be part of the action, if you will, and kind of see it from field level of how our athletes are actually training and practicing, right? And how it doesn't look that different from when you're in <laughs> high school in South Florida and it's 95 degrees in July. I mean, whether you're playing on a high school field or, or at our Baptist Health training complex, right? Like that's what it is. You're, you're training and, and they're kind of going through those same experiences. And so it was really good for us because what actually happened was we didn't even require our players to like go and speak to the kids kids or even ask coach Flo, we just kind of put the kids down there to be able to witness it. And at the end of practice every day, what we'll see is players going over and spending a few minutes with the kids. I mean, they just got off the field in this hot sun and doing this difficult, grueling practice and coaches would come say hello. Coach Flores would come say hello. Um, our GM would go and say hello to the to the high school coaching staff. We've had girls flag teams that have done this opportunity as well. And so it's really meaningful, I think, for the the kids to get an opportunity to see their their favorite players or their Dolphins players as just guys that are out there trying to work hard every day. And so they get a chance to spend a few minutes interacting with them and asking some candid questions. And it's not a scripted opportunity. So they kind of get a little look inside of what it's like. Yeah, no, I, I love hearing those stories. And I love seeing that happen because those smiles on the kids' faces, no matter what that age is, right? Youth or you know, teenagers, it, it's a real thing. I'm talking with uh, Rashana Hamilton. She is the Senior Director of Community Relations and Youth programs for the Miami Dolphins. We're talking about the Dolphins Junior Dolphins program. And, you know, when you're doing stuff, right, you're kind of caught up in the day of it. And, you know, years go by. And then you guys sit down and you're like, well, let's count this up. <laughs> How many teams have we hosted? <laughs> How many student athletes have we impacted? And the number, like I said at the top, is big.
big. I mean, how surprised were you guys at the the great job you've done? I'm allowing you to toot your horn again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we were very surprised. I think the thing about South Florida is, right, we're kind of a football hub. So if you look at our Tri-County area with Broward um, County Schools, Dade County Schools, and Palm Beach County Schools, and we've got 142 varsity high school football programs, right? And we do include girls flag in that because it's a sanctioned sport mm-hmm. year. And so we said, um, you know, again, with Tom Garfinkel, we sat down and said, how do we make sure that we are impacting every single high school football team? Um, and so that's what we decided to do, right? We said, let's bring them out to training camp to interact with our players. Let's bring them out to games and give them an opportunity to join our team for the national anthem down on the field so they know what it feels like, right, when you're in that stadium with 60,000 people getting ready to kick off. Um, But then we also said, how do we help those schools? Because, you know, there's only so many experiences that we can bring 142 teams down to. (laughs) We said, how do we go out to them um, and impact them where they are? And that's how we came up with our Dolphins Donations Program. And we were able to get Baptist Health to help us um, provide some funds towards that. And so we've gone out to a ton of high schools and we've gotten them new equipment, safe equipment. We've done weight rooms. I mean, just the impact that it's had and just seeing, you know, even with the donations, when we when we lift up that back of the truck and there's all this cool stuff coming off and there's mm-hmm. cleats on there and, you know, you're seeing the excitement on these kids' faces, you understand like, wow, you know, this, this, we're, we're impacting these kids. And again, when we started counting and we were like, well, we know there's this many kids playing every single year and we've done this now we've reached that goal of getting every school in five years like we've really gone through about fifteen thousand kids that have had some meaningful interaction with us and we just thought that was a great milestone yeah no doubt about it i, I know on the news release that you sent uh, sent us i think it was uh, five hundred thousand in athletic equipment donated and i know you know all teams around the league do that but that's a that's a big big number there and you know it, it's so important because you know with budgets being cut all over the place uh, when it comes to sports that that takes it down so um, and, and I know the schools in the South Florida area know how they they you know get noticed if you will for things like that but could you explain to the listeners out there how do you go about figuring out who is in need of that type of money right the great thing that we do is we work with the with the counties so we work with the athletic directors um, for the entire county and we sit with them and we say tell us your schools that are most in need you know, tell us the schools that haven't been able to do their weight room, you know, renovation projects. And we really let them guide us. We actually work with them, too, to donate about $5,000 a year to their scholar athlete um, banquets and, and scholarship funds. And so um, when we start helping them, we then say, let's trickle that down to the schools. Um, you know, tell us who's in need. And they do. And, and of course, you know, there, we get schools that email us and send us pictures, and so we can take all that into account as well. But mostly it's working with those county athletic directors because they do. They know where the most needs are in the system. They know where the funding is missing. They know the schools that um, have the highest population of free and reduced lunch programs, and so therefore they're not getting those, those funds they need for kind of these other aspects, right, because they're having to put money into other areas in the school. And so that's really the way that we go about it. And we found that it's been very successful. Every every team that we've dropped something off to has had a need. It's come off the truck fairly quickly and been put into their storage for use <laughs> right away. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you guys also have a great partnership, I know, with Baptist Health. Uh, we've done these stories in the past. And, and in addition to the, the equipment, one of the things that I liked, because this is so important in the game right now, is the, the health and wellness aspect of it. Uh, talk a little bit about that partnership you have with them and how it kind of blends together. To, to give a well-rounded approach that you're given to the, the high school and the youth programs? Absolutely. Well, Baptist Health saw all the work that we were doing at the local high schools, and they decided to jump in, and not just with, with resources and providing staff that could speak, but also with funds. So they helped provide some funds that could purchase quit, equipment, but they also provided the people, right? They've provided doctors. Um, they provided health professionals that have come out and actually helped Um, when we do the donations, we normally include like a character development speech, right? We want there to be some, some inclusion of learning. That's the whole purpose of getting kids to play sports is to learn something. And so by having Baptists be involved, they've been able to speak to kids about heat and hydration, right? And about keeping your body prime for whatever the next level is, but just even keeping your body prime to keep going, right? Like health is a big discussion, especially as we've been in a pandemic for 16 months. And so I think they've been really great partners for us 
on the financial side, but they've also been great partners on the programming side by providing so much support. And they really came to us and said, we, we want in, right? Like there is, there's a, a need here and student athletes are a great market. And so I could not be more pleased with their support of our programs and excited to keep working with them through the coming years. Yep, it takes a village, right? Uh, Roshana Hamilton is on the line. She's the Senior Director, Community Relations and Youth Programs for the Miami Dolphins, the Junior Dolphins Program, doing great things. And you touched upon this a little earlier, and it was going to be one of my questions anyway, so let's dive into it. Uh, for people around the country that don't know it, the um, you know NFL flag and, and, and the teams, I mean, I, I know the Jets have started a league in New Jersey, the Falcons are doing great work and you guys are involved in in florida where it is a sanctioned sport now there's state championships and all that i i just would love for you to uh you know explain to the listeners on this podcast a little bit about how the explosion is happening uh at the girls flag level thanks to teams like the dolphins and others around the league Absolutely. I think what's great about where we stand now as a country and a society is that women are be, being encouraged to be more active, right? Um, you know, we saw it kind of years ago start with Title IX, but I think that as young girls are starting to play more and be more involved and be more competitive, we've seen flag football now become a collegiate sport with scholarships. And so, um, you know, we were one of the first states that actually had girls flag football sanctioned, but we tried to go a little deeper and say, how do we support that? Right. Cause it's one thing to have a sanction, but how do we help girls actually find the game? How do we get girls to continue to play the game? Um, and so we've had great partners in Nike that have helped us do that. So we have run our own girls flag football league, um, two years ago, obviously before COVID, when we had some different protocols, but we were able to have about 16 teams that played in kind of an off season um, uh, league with us at our building. And so we thought, how do we get, kind of keep girls playing, right? There's all this seven on seven and combine activity for boys when it's not necessarily football season, but we're not necessarily seeing that with girls. So that's what we did by creating the league is gave them a place to play off season and gave them a place to kind of continue to fall in love with the game. And we've also done donations with them. Um, again, with Nike, where we've given out some apparel and some cool swag and getting them involved in activities, right? And just keep trying to bring more and more girls to the game and get them introduced to the game. But it's it's been important. We've seen this explosion happen over South Florida that more and more girls are signing up. Coaches are actually having to run tryouts and make cuts. And before mm-hmm. it was just they were trying to field a team. So I think we're seeing this growth. I think we're seeing great partners jump in in this space, and we'll continue to see that growth over the next four to five years. Yeah, I think it is just going to continue to explode. Um, let's uh, wrap up here. And, and before we rolled the tape, we, you and I were talking about my experience with the Dolphins where I was at the, uh, the South Florida High School Football Media day and I can't remember when it was it was some five years ago and I think you guys had some 90 teams there and it was just so professional uh you know the kids got a real taste of what it's like you know and then more and more communities around the country are doing uh, the media days but you told me that you guys uh you know because of COVID have changed it up a little bit and I love some of the things that you've added to it so I'd like to give you a little bit of time here going away to, to talk about how you've evolved a traditional media day into something much much more. Yeah, absolutely. We started to see that there was a need in our market to support high school athletes, not just on the field because they get that part, right? They have their coaches and their trainers, but how do we support them off the field the same way we do our Dolphins rookies? You know, they, they go through a rookie success program and they're learning about all these elements when they, when they get introduced to the league. And we said, how do we do that with high school athletes? Because there's a need there. And so we worked with some great partners. We worked with Truist. We worked with Nike. Um, we worked with Facebook and uh, we provided a life skills opportunity learning opportunity um, around media day. So we had our rookies come on and they talked about their experience with financial literacy, right? And we bring it to their level of what happens when you get your first credit card and you're in college and you know, you don't, you don't go blow it in the, in the very first <laughs> month. And, and that all comes back on you and interest and all that kind of stuff, right? That happens when you start to become an adult. Um, as the kids say, they start adulting. And so <laughs> our rookies talk about those things. They talk about nutrition and what they eat before games and they're candid. You know, they say, yeah, I was on an ice cream and pizza diet and I got to college and realized that, that I couldn't sustain that. So I really had to work on what I was eating and, you know, making sure I was getting electrolytes and carbs and the right amount of protein. And so we're, we're, it's our way of hoping that kids are getting this information that will help them not just thrive in high school, but even if they choose not to play college football, right, it'll help them just thrive in the world again as they start adulting and, and growing up and needing some of these lessons. Adulting. I, uh, I, I'm going to have to start that sometime. <laughs> 
anytime soon at the age of 60. But uh, <laughs> you know what? I just thought of one thing before Agreed. I let you, yeah, before I let you go here. One of the things that we do do a lot of on HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com is promote. Every team has a high school football coach of the week. And I, I think I want to give you a few seconds here to talk about that because that's a big deal. And every team around the nation has been doing it. And I, it's such an honor for these coaches. And it comes with a little bit of a reward with it. Uh, so if you want to take a few seconds to just talk about your program, is it any different in 2021? And, and let the listeners know how it works. Absolutely. So we do a, um, a program, um, as all the other clubs do, where we highlight one coach. And I, actually, um, not last season, the season before, we were celebrating Coach Shula, who's a, the mm-hmm. well-known coach here. Um, and we were celebrating tenured coaches. So our criteria is a little different every single year. It's not necessarily the coach with the most wins. Um, some years it's the coach with the, with the most years. Some years it's the co- coach with the most impact. Um, that's done stuff for their communities. But I think it's a great opportunity to highlight all that it takes to be a high school coach. Um, you know, it it's, can be a thankless job, you know, nine times oh, out yeah. of ten. These coaches aren't making a lot of money. They're, they're spending time with the kids and helping them grow, both on the field and off the field. So we take all of that into account when we nominate our coaches. And there's a little bit of a prize that comes along with it financially. So um, I know all the coaches will be – seeing this and hearing this and, and giving me a call later and figuring out how they get in. <laughs> yeah, and it's a big deal at the end because uh, all 32 winners go uh, for that big prize, which is, you, you as you said, the annual Don Shula High School Coach of the Year Award, which is a big, big deal. And uh, just uh, excited to have been a part of uh, promoting that through the years here at High School Football America. Roshana, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk me talk to me today. And, you know, more than that, you know, congratulations on the impact that the, the Dolphins and the Junior Dolphins program program have had on the sport of high school football so thanks for joining me absolutely thank you so much and keep your eyes on us we're not done yet (laughs) (laughs) sounds good (laughs) that's the nfl play football podcast the nfl's initiative to provide fun and engaging experience for players of all ages and skill levels hey coaches don't forget to check out playfootball.nfl.com for some great resources to help you improve in the coaching profession I'm Jeff Fisher of High School Football America, and you've been listening to the NFL Play Football Podcast.